Odysseus who does these amazing things, right? But <clears throat> notice here, it's all kind of rooted in humor, isn't it? That's an important part of being uh, this notion of the tall tale, right? Of course, notice as well, the assumed audience, this is, this is huge, think about this at 2B, the assumed audience of this text is in fact Americans. Notice, the July 4th celebration, right? Notice he keeps using we and he keeps talking about this was back before. Today, it's not so much like that, right? Okay. Also, you're kind of expected to know a little bit about the geography of America, namely, of course, the Grand Canyon and Death Valley, as well as State, uh, as well as, uh, State Plain as well. The idea being now that we've got to come up with a story to explain some of the crazy, crazy kinds of topography that we find in America. Death Valley, really low. Grand Canyon, amazing. All of those amazing places. How can you explain it? Well, it's all explained by Pecos Bill. Pecos Bill, of course, goes for a ride. The cyclone is going to create all kinds of, you know, you know challenges for him. And, and there it is. Now, let's talk really quickly at 2B about what is central to the enjoyment of this text the personification of the cyclone. Now, wait a minute. Let's get a definition. Personification, to give human attributes to something non-human. Notice in this text that the cyclone is in some ways personified as almost being like human. Um, of course, this makes it great because then we have Pecos Bill who is having his contest with the quote-unquote monster, as it says, right? All right, let's turn quickly now and go through a level one and two reading of this thing. Notice we start out really quickly with some irony and some humor. Obviously, we've got our frayed holes. That is to say, you know, when the, uh, when the uh, twisters come out, when the cyclone comes out. And on page 1220, then, after the introduction is over, we're ready for the personification. Notice that our writer, Felton, is able as well to play around with varying sentence length. What do we mean by that? We try to vary our sentence length when we write. Good writers know how to do this. Instead of having all long sentences or all short sentences, we try and vary our sentence length. Just look on page 1220 as a classic example of this. Notice you have a somewhat long sentence with, he showed the walk, trot, canter, low jog, slow rack, fast rack, single foot, pace, stepping pace, fox trot, running walk with the others not known. See, that's a long sentence. But look at the very first sentence of the next paragraph. Then the cyclone came. Do you see it? In other words, notice that you have this interesting kind of juxtaposition of varying sentence lengths. Of course, the personification will ultimately lead to Bill and the fight. The fight will begin on 1221 in an instant. The cyclone is on him. Pecos Bill's ready, ready and waiting. And then, of course, over to, um, over to uh, uh, 1222, uh, 1223, we've got the major contest now that's about to take place. Notice how Bill on 1223, we're told, He's having the time of his life. Um, when you're in your junior year and we talk American thought and American history and American literature, one of the questions that we'll ask is, is it true that Americans seem to be a very optimistic people? Walt Whitman seemed to think so, the great American poet. And one of the things that makes Americans so optimistic, many have argued, like Mark Twain, is that many of our stories will have these heroes that are set in the middle of really terrible experiences and they seem to be having the time of their life. Notice as we read this one. As for Bill, he was having the time of his life riding on a, riding on a, on, on a cyclone, on a twister. Shouting at the top of his voice, kicking his opponent in the ribs and jabbing his thumb in its flanks. It responded and went on wild bucking rampage over the entire West. And now, as it says a couple of lines later, the fight was on. Very quickly... Uh, it's like the monster, the cyclone, uh, realized it was over. By the way, in your senior year, a 3A observation, write it down, you'll come back to it. Um, when you, in your senior year, you study the Anglo-Saxon epic poem Beowulf, Beowulf will fight against Grendel, the monster Grendel, and you're going to have a very similar kind of contest. This huge, disturbing monster will fight with Beowulf, our hero, and the minute we're told that Beowulf grabs hold of him, he knows, Grendel, the monster, knows that
that it's over. Just like our cyclone who heads towards the Rocky Mountains and then of course is dissipated, creating Death Valley. And then as well, some mention of Grand Canyon, which is technically given a scribe to Paul Bunyan who dragged his axe across the ground and that's what created uh, the famous uh, uh, Grand Canyon. All right, let's jump to 2A really quickly. What's a possible message here? Well, there's a couple of them. One, of course, is you have to be able to smile in the face of adversity. Uh, another way to say this is don't be afraid. Courage is necessary in having success. Of course, another interesting latent message is that Americans are a people who will stand up to a contest and they will be happy in their, uh, in their moment uh, of greatest uh, uh, activity, we might say, uh, challenge. And to that degree, uh, afraid of nothing, we might say, right? So our tall tale heroes are these kind of heroes that are afraid of nothing. They'll even ride on a cyclone. Of course, um, we should say it to be that this is a tall tale full of humor and yes that word you wrote down hyperbole or exaggeration right it's intended to be kind of understood as funny and yeah right but we see this a lot in mythology don't we and of course in tall tales as well at level 3a we've already mentioned a couple of uh, different other titles what is for you your favorite title about cyclones or tornadoes or twisters. There was, of course, a film a number of years ago called Twister, which interestingly played along with this notion that it was almost like these twisters had a personality, like they were mad or something and coming after, uh, you know, people or buildings or houses or whatever. Finally, in, three, uh, in 3B, how do you respond to this kind of tall tale? Do you like these kinds of stories? Who in your life, when you were a child, was a great storyteller that could kind of tell these really wonderful stories that looking back you realize probably were, uh, you know, tall tales of a kind. And finally, to what degree do you consider yourself an optimistic person, a person that in the middle of adversity is having the time of your life? You're in a situation you can't avoid, and so you say, you know what, instead of whining and complaining, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enjoy this experience and make the best of it. That notion of making the best of it is in many ways a whole, always a part, a, a, a message that stands right behind the tall tale. In other words, even in the middle of really bad stuff, always believe that you can work things out. Well, there you go, an introduction to Pecos Bill, right? I hope you enjoyed it.